Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we're privileged to have with us keynote speaker, Joel Bogus. Welcome to the program, Joel. Hey. Hey, Mike. Uh, thank you very much for having me. And, you know, I started in traditional radio, my gosh, 28 years ago. And even uh-huh. though I, I've had, you know, years of experience, let's just say I kind of know the broadcast industry by now, I still don't take for granted the invitations to be on people's shows. I mean, there's a lot of podcasts out there, a lot of um, options that our listeners could make, and they chose to listen to the conversation between you and I, and I know you feel the same way, but that means a lot to me. So again, thank you, and congratulations on uh, your success. Thank you, Joel, and I agree with you a thousand percent, and I really also think you would agree with this, which is it doesn't matter what you're talking about in this moment and time, someone somewhere can pick up a nugget of knowledge that they've heard before, but maybe you will present it in a unique and different way, and it'll just click with them. And so I'm excited to hear what uh, you have to present. And really, it's, this is just kind of like a fireside chat mastermind session and kind of learning a little bit about what you've learned over the years and what you apply in your keynote speeches. So Give us a little bit of your background, and then um, let's talk about some of your main topics that you help to coach and deliver in your speeches, you know, the topics of never giving up and never missing a sale and finding your voice, and love to uh, dive into those. Sure. Well, again, Mike, I appreciate that you having me on the show. And I mentioned I've been started in radio way back in the day, and I, I walked away from radio in uh, 97, and when podcasting started to just peak itself over the horizon, I knew, Mike, that I needed to not just be in the podcasting industry, but I needed to be one of the early adopters and one of the go-to folks in the podcasting industry. So you know what? I, of course, launched this show. No brainer, right? And while Relaunch, that's my current uh, podcast, has not been our first show. It's actually show number nine yeah, a lot of trips to the batter's box, a lot of practice swings. But finally, with this show, we were able to knock it out of the park. And the relaunch show, it's uh, we're at about 1.7 million downloads so far. For me, uh, that's a big number. And uh, so we're having a blast uh, with that. And uh, we're also having a blast with, with our, our speaking career. I spoke in front of my largest audience uh, just a few days ago, Sunday. Uh, there, there, was a, there were about 350 people in that audience. That's a big number for me. <laughs> and um, we are just spreading the never give up message as, as quickly and as um, practically as, as possible, uh, giving people the practical tips, tools, and techniques that they need to succeed. You know, because if there's one thing that we all need to be reminded of, regardless of if we're entrepreneurs, if we're brick and mortar business owners, or if we're somewhere in between, we need to remember to never give up the the fight because we have a responsibility. You know, that's an interesting point, which is um, I, I heard I heard the same kind of a, a point made in the sales world recently where it was suggested that if you know your business and you are an industry expert of sorts because you know what you know, you know, and, and that's a whole other topic, but people sometimes don't feel like, well, I don't know much. I just do whatever. I sell widgets or I whatever. And now all of a sudden, when they realize and kind of come into their own that they do know more than they think they do, and their audience and their tribe and their followers and their clients and prospects look to them for advice. Well, now all of a sudden that gives them a lot of confidence, but in reality, you are doing your target audience a disservice if you have a very ethical, very good solution to a problem to your target audience, and you don't get it out there. So can you speak a little bit about that? Because I think that that kind of gets the ball rolling, and then the never give up kind of keeps it going where all of a sudden people just go, oh, you know what, I, I did that uh, a promotional piece, and I didn't get 14 keynote speeches for you know the next 10 days, and so now I guess I'm not a success. You can't do that. 
You really can't. I think the mistake that a lot of people make, and with the best of intentions, is that they don't realize who they are, their strengths, their gifts, or even their message. And it's because they're they're so involved with who they are. They're they're married to themselves, yeah. if you will. And one of the things that I recommend to clients and you know people that I, that I work with and that I'm trying to help is, you know what? Let's ask some people that you know and that you trust what they've seen in you. You know, if let, let's ask some people. Gosh, what, what what strength have you seen in me? What do you see me contributing to or want to contribute to? What what weaknesses? I do I have what what aren't my strong features and if you can make it through that conversation without strangling or ripping the head off of the person that you're talking to you're going to learn a lot about yourself and what's even more important is you're going to learn how that you can apply that moving forward in building your business working on your side hustle or just excelling in the place where you work yeah, that's a that's a really interesting point because I think a lot of times people would attribute that uh, personality trait of never giving up as you know either a personal or a professional or something because it's from their perspective. And you mentioned about you know you're married to yourself, and I I have heard that presented many times where it's kind of like you've got myopathy. You know, you're so used to this that you're you know you, and it's just nothing is unique. But then when someone else from the outside it experiences your you know passion enthusiasm knowledge area of expertise now all of a sudden it starts to chip away at your own you know uh, myopic view of yourself to where it's like you know what? I, I kind of do know stuff so um do you find the never give up attitude um kind of transcending between personal as well as professional because there's application in both worlds yeah, that's a that's a very interesting question, and the short answer is that that I do. However, it's really hard sometimes to pick yourself up from a setback, from a failure, from a defeat, and to realize that you know what, this is just part of the process. And if I take what I can learn from this, then you know what, I can move forward, continue the journey, continue building my thing and use the, the knowledge, wisdom, and insight that I've, I've kind of gathered into, into doing it better and not making the, the same mistake again. But I think, well, a, a mistake that a lot of people make is they will allow a setback to take them all the way back. I don't yeah. think anyone you know, ever... It, kinda, said, it reminds me of this yeah, yeah. Uh, quote that I think is attributed to Zig Ziglar, yesterday uh-huh. ended last night. You know, yesterday happened, might have been negative, but last night at midnight, it ended. Today's a new day, and I would submit to you, and I want to get your thoughts on this, yesterday ended last night, and if you had a great, wonderful, top-of-the-mountain-top experience, yesterday still ended last night because guess what? You gotta, It's a brand-new day. You can't just rest on that laurel <laughs> of whatever that was, right? So you it know, can go in a positive or, or a negative sense. You mentioned one of my favorite speakers and of course that's zig ziglar and a quick quick story on him 11 years ago 10 11 years ago when i stepped away from corporate america the first speaking engagement that i had was leading a meeting at ziglar headquarters and sitting in the front section of that room well you know who it was it was the master of motivation himself it was it was zig ziglar Mm. and even zig in his 80s had his little flip steno notebook and, and a little pencil because he was there to, to learn. Yeah. He was there to, to grab onto something. And that just epitomizes what entrepreneurs need to do. They, they never give up in their journey, even at 70, even at 80, whatever your age is. And at the end of that meeting, just like at the end of every single meeting that Zig ever had in his office, he told his team this. He said, now go out there and sell somebody something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the reason he said that is because even if he brought in a $10,000, $100,000 contract yesterday, doesn't matter. Yeah. Today is a new day. 
And if you failed yesterday, if you made 10 calls and got 11 no's, <laughs> you can still move forward. But if you got seven yeses, you can move forward because maybe you can get eight. Absolutely. You know, um, you, you, thinking about that same concept, it reminds me of yet another, you know, uh, icon in the speaking world, uh, Tony Robbins, who talks about Kanai, constant and never-ending improvement. And that doesn't mean constant and never-ending improvement until you think you've got it so you stop or you hit a certain age. It just means constant and never-ending, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, the the elites in any industry know that it's all about learning, continual learning. And that's what you're going to see in, in the airport and in, in the meeting rooms. The speakers themselves or the leaders themselves taking notes like Zig did or reading a book by, you know, maybe somebody that you've never even heard of because it's all about, okay, what can I learn? What one piece of information or nugget can I use in my speech, in my program, in my business that can take it to the next level. And the leaders that choose to not do that, well, they're leading themselves into being out of business. Yeah, I, I, I just think we could continue going down that path for so long. And then finally, yep. someone can say, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. But you know, leaders are readers, and we, we all these little quips and quotes, but you just have to. You know, your, your education did not end when you finished your degree or your diploma or your graduate degree. It, it, it's a day-to-day, and I will submit to you, it's even more, uh, it can be even more granular in the sense that, hey, what did you do in the last 30 minutes that you could do just a little bit more efficiently moving forward? And I was just thinking about that today with some processes that I've done where I noticed I was doing something repetitively, and I figured out a way just to automate it to be a little bit quicker and a little bit easier so that it just saves just little inches of time. Because sometimes we can learn, you know, in the bigger macro sense, but even in the day-to-day sense, what are some things that didn't work for me yesterday or today or did work for me that I can do a little bit more of? So I, I love that whole mindset. Uh, um, that, so I'm, I'm happy we brought that up. Let's, let's transition into finding your voice. And I'm sure. certain that you're not talking about getting chairs to turn around after you sing, I'm certain you're talking about, you know, who are you? You need to be you. And if you are a certain type of person um, and your voice can be personality, it can be your, you know, persona, it can be your competitive advantage. But um, how do you uh, identify to someone that you need to learn to find your voice? And then what are some some good steps and tips in uh, starting down that journey? Because I'm certain it's not a checklist. You do these three things, and now here's my voice, and I'm done. Sure. Well, just like learning, it is a, it is a constant process. And, you know, I don't know if, ever, if anyone will ever 100% find their voice <laughs> until, they, until they meet their maker, maybe. But I think that we can get close, and as Zig Ziglar says, dangerously close <laughs> to, where, to where we need to be. But uh, if there's one thing that I've learned, Mike, and you've probably seen or experienced something like this too, is that we all have a hunger and an appetite to really get in touch with who we are. Not who other people think that we are, but who we really are. And it's, it's that voice that is, is inside us. Uh, Rabbi Daniel Lappin good friend of mine, he, was, he, he endorsed the book. And one of the things that, that he said, and I was very privileged of, for this type of endorsement, he said that your voice is the sound that your soul makes. And then I read that, and then I read it again, and I thought, yeah, that's it. It's the voice that comes from the inside that, that reminds you, not tells you, but reminds you, really what you need to be doing, how you need to be serving, how you need to be helping, how you, how you need to be uh, growing. I think he nailed it. He probably nailed it just as good, if not better, than, than I did in the book. Yeah, that's a, I think too many people feel like, well, I might have an idea of my voice, 
but I feel trapped in where I am career-wise. Sure. Let's think about career-wise. So okay. what would you advise to people that say, I'm working my nine to five, my factory job, my whatever, you know, corporate world job, but my true passion, my voice is X, fill in the blank, whatever that may be. Sure. How do you, how do you advise someone that starts now, you know, because it's kind of like the reticular activator in your brain. Once you start be, um, made aware of something, you start noticing it, then it starts working on you. And so now right, right. This, this whole thing, someone's going, oh, I really want to do this, but I'm here. And so I don't want to be impractical and put my family at risk and quit this and, you know, too soon. So what do you do when sure. someone starts noticing their voice, but they realize they've got to take a bunch of steps to get there, and that's mm-hmm. a hard part? Okay, that is another interesting question. And, you know, first of all, let me kind of back up here and and just catch my breath. Because, you know what, Mike? I'm no superhero. And and, and I still struggle with some of these things that that we're talking about because I'm I'm human. Yeah. You know, and and you're human. and, And we're not perfect, but we do the best that we can. And as long as we honor the commitment that we've made, you myself and the people that are listening to your show, as long as we continue to honor the commitment to get an inch better tomorrow, then that's what it, that's what it's all about. And if, if you're working a nine to five or a day job uh, right now, and you really feel that you can express your voice, your real voice in a better, more powerful way, doing, doing your own thing, then one of the things that I would suggest that you do is number one, Whatever it is that you're wanting to do, find somebody who's done it successfully and then talk to him, talk to her, find out how they were able to uh, reach the level of success they did and find out how they got started, you know, and you might find out, well, you'll definitely learn a lot, but you might find out that they started by doing their thing as a side hustle. Yeah. Keeping their job paying their bills, supporting their family, making sure dinner was on the table for their kids, and then working, you know, two hours a day, 10 hours over the weekend on on their side hustle. And if you do that with focus, with faith, and with follow through, you'll be surprised with just a few dedicated hours can do for you. Yeah, that's super excellent advice. Um, Thanks. And, and there's two things that jump out at me there, which is um, the, the phrase, and I'm a, a big quote person, but success leaves clues. Well, yep. it makes sense, right? Why go try to reinvent the wheel? Find someone that's successful doing what you would like to be doing one day and reach out to them. Now, don't be needy and don't be you know, uh, um, uh, offensive, but if it is something where you could you know, buy that speaker's book or program and then reach out to say, I, I need to get some advice. Or if it's a local person, you know, can I buy you a dinner? Forget the Starbucks because you're going to pick the brain more than what that cup of, cup of coffee is going to cost. So, you know, really do it right if you want to get some advice from someone. Sure. But that's super, super advice. And then there's never been a more powerful time in history to be able to easily achieve a side hustle, right? Because moonlighting back in the day, you couldn't do it. You'd have to, you know, you would go punch another clock, and and it was trading dollars for time. And now we have this this uh, uh, huge advantage of the internet and computers and and other gurus and mentors that can help you. You know, if you wanted to start a business on Amazon, there's some coaches and trainers that can tell you how to avoid problems and how to do that really quickly, or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. So I think those are really huge things. And then the big takeaway to me there was. You don't have to spend 14 hours a day trying to do your side hustle an hour, two hours, you know, on the weekend. And, and I would caution someone hearing that and, and say, you still have to have balance. Don't let your family be neglected. You know, don't hole away in your office, you know, 10 hours on a Saturday, you know, take some focused time, but make sure you're focusing too on your family because that's what's there for the long term. Right. Absolutely. Now that is excellent advice. I sent this email off yesterday and someone was asking me uh, advice. Actually, hold on. Let me, let me rethink that. Okay. Well, it, I don't recall exactly how, how that came to be, but really if you're starting, if you're getting ready to start a side hustle and if your time is at an all time premium, like everyone's is these days, instead of 
decorating the windows, you know, like with window dressing. If you're starting a hide hustle, go out and recruit a client. Go out and find a client. And then use that revenue to build your business. Yep. Now, now what, what some people do, and I did this, so I know, is, is they concentrate on the window dressing first, the decorations, before they had a business. Yeah. And, and that, if that's the case, and it was for me, that meant I had a very expensive hobby. Yep. And uh, if, you, if you just get a client, or two, people that you know, reach out to your network, then, then you, can, you can build your business. You can bootstrap it. There, that's, that's the phrase or the word that I was, lo- I was looking for. And, and, you know, another aspect within that same thought process is um, to give yourself confidence to get that first or second customer. Mm-hmm. Find someone that you can help with your, you know, widget, your product or service, and mm-hmm. do it for free in exchange for them giving you A, feedback, and B, a testimonial and case study. Feedback. So So now you have something to go to, you know, prospect three, four, or five, and beyond and go, look what I did for so-and-so. Look what they said. And then now you're able to, you know, just start charging your fee for that. And then I'll, I'll tell you another tip is three or four um, clients into it, you now have got your own footing and you're a, cause you're not going to charge your first few clients what you really should charge them because you're nervous about it. So now after the first three or four, you can then go to five, six, eight and 10 and beyond and kind of start um, uh, upping your price because you are feeling more confident in the results and value that you're giving to them. But it kind of starts with that idea, the side hustle, let's get a free pro bono in exchange for, and then you just start building in with the, if the focus is on giving that value, um, the money will follow. And then let's kind of wrap it up with the one thought process with your favorite speaker, because I know you will know the um, end of this quote, which is, if you help enough people get what they want in life, boom. You get what you, you will need. definitely so, get whatever you yeah, know. It, it just really is a mindset. So, how can people learn more about you, yourself, your speaking uh, topics, your keynote opportunities? What is the best way they can reach out to you? Yeah, thank you again, Mike, for having me on uh, the show. I remember now where I, I got that from. It, it's something that that came out of my brain. It's something that I that I wrote to uh, send out in a, in a in a one of my newsletters, which I do from time to time. Okay. So the best way to get in touch with me, you know what? Just um, subscribe to my podcast. Actually, before you subscribe to my podcast, just visit us at relaunchshow.com slash subscribe and give it a listen. Listen first and see if the relaunch show would be valuable for you. You know, your time is at an all-time premium, but if this podcast, like Mike's podcast, can, can help you in your journey, then make it Make it part of, of your routine. Put it in your toolbox. But um, I think well, that's Joel, what I would. That's I, what I, would recommend I love first. that. It, you're not trying to sell something or get. You're just saying, hey, let's get some results in advance. Listen to my podcast. If you find value in it, subscribe to it, and then come on over to my website. So I'll make sure we have your website in our show notes. And thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you. All the best, Mike. Thank you for your time today. God bless. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.